Grace and peace and welcome to worship and fellowship this morning at Community. I invite you to please register your attendance and pass the red folders down to the person next to you so they can sign in also. Do we have any visitors today? We have Jim and Lynn Smith here, I think. Well, you're not visitors, but we haven't seen you for a while, and it's nice to see you again. So they're here. Um, is anybody leaving? Has it, it's going to be 100 today. Is anybody leaving? Not. Okay, you're leaving Brago for the season? We wish you safe journeys and a good summer, and we look forward to seeing you in the fall. And uh, I got a, a text from Marsha. She and Betty Sonderager made it home safely. I guess it was an adventure. She hasn't told me, but she said it was quite an adventure, but they did make it home, and her boys were there to meet her. So that was kind of a nice welcome for Marsha. Um, we do have fellowship this, this morning in Fellowship Hall after worship. Please join us for refreshments and take time to sign the uh, birthday cards that are in there, birthday and anniversary cards for the month of April. And a uh, few things to remind you of. If you have a cell phone on, could you silence it, please? <laughs> <laughs> chuckle, chuckle. Lynn and Jim, somebody's phone went off last Sunday during uh, the prelude, and it really caused Jenny confusion, and she quit playing the prelude until we turned the phone off. And then, let's try that again. So, anyway... Thank you very much for doing that. And also, we have a lot of empty spaces on the whiteboard in back. We need some people to sign up for liturgists and ushers. And if you'd like to maybe help with baked goods, put your name down, and that you can help with our Sunday ministry in that way. So this coming week, we have some birthdays. Today is Barbara Coates and Barbara Marlott. Who are the, absent today. Who are absent. The choir is missing them greatly. <laughs> Um, the second, on Tuesday, Alan Tulving is having a birthday. 64. Ooh. And then on the seventh, Lynn Vasquez will be celebrating her birthday. Don't forget to sign up for those, uh, sign those cards and wish them well. They get mailed out, and uh, Mateo's even heard from a couple people. They really, really appreciate the cards and the thoughts, knowing that we're thinking of them and that they are missed. Um, Elaine. We would like you to share a little bit about the South District Conference, please. Good morning, everybody. From Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is is easy and my burden is light. This is the words from our uh, wonderful Savior Jesus Christ when he was uh, ministering to his flock and the annual conference meeting or South Dis District meeting yesterday was getting ourselves prepared for the annual conference that's going to be later in June, mid-June. And a lot of administrative tasks, housekeeping tasks, to nominate people to represent our South District. Um, but uh, Reverend Sandra, she uh, encapsulated everything in, uh, in the end, very uh, inspiring message. And I would encourage you to uh, get on the link. Matt, Mateo had sent out emails about it and go to her encouraging message about how to nourish ourselves. And I have made a commitment to be more church-centric in my life, more God-centric in my life, um, to um, always be thinking of God in the mornings when I wake up and say, thank you, God, and, and stuff. So it's a chance for us to nourish our souls, nourish and um, take a rest. I think we've had a very busy season this year in Borrego. We've had a busy three years getting through COVID, um, and we all came through this together, and I'm so proud of us. So um, I really encourage you to uh, look at that link, and if you need that link, talk to Mateo, and he'll make sure you get that link so that you can also um, uh, advance towards the end, the last 10 minutes, 
and you will hear Reverend Sandra, Sandra message. Thank you. That reminds me, as I've been walking, I try and use it kind of as a meditation time. And one of the things I remind myself, I, ha I have a PTA walk. I praise, thank, and then I ask. So consider doing a PTA walk or a PTA time every day where you can praise, thank, and then ask for, for the Lord to help you in your everyday life. Bible study. We have Bible study at 11.30 today, and then we also, our Pentecost Bible study is returning to Wednesday at 6.30. We're on chapter two, two if, you're, if you've got the book and reading along. Are there other announcements then that need to be shared with the congregation? Then let's begin our worship with the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. Today, as we listen to the prelude, let us be reminded that if we are coming from the world of many into the world of one, as the light of Christ fills this church, so let it fill our spirit. Enjoy this time of meditation as we prepare for worship. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. All right. Please stand if you are able for the call to worship. We reach out our hand to put it at your side. We do not doubt. We believe. Our hearts are burning when we talk to you. The Lord has risen indeed. Should we suffer, let love help to endure it. We will suffer. Okay, opening prayer. Join us in the opening prayer. Christ, Savior, you defeated death, offering the world hope and forgiveness. We do not doubt your love, but strengthen our resolve. Make the scriptures to burn in our hearts so we can warm those who suffer. Guide the people to endure with a steadfast love that heals and forgives all. Amen. Okay, the opening hymn today is Sweet, Sweet Spirit in the United Methodist Hymnal number 334 or up on the screen.
right, well, uh, please be seated. Uh, it's time for joys and concerns. This is the time that we use to raise any joys and concerns that you might have. Please raise your hand and we will come to you. If you are online, you can list your joys and concerns in the comment section. We have Rachel with the microphone. She's making her, she's behind you. <laughs> she's going to Brian. I guess I can put my hand on. <laughs> um, so I had a nice visit, albeit short, with the parents yesterday. And uh, it was, I was there to do my taxes. And well, it was a lot like listening to the old record of the Bickersons playing. So just some prayers for patience and loving patience with both my parents for each other. Uh, mom's got Alzheimer's or is developing it and dad's uh, cantankerous. So it's not a great combination. But anyway, thank you. Yeah. I'd like you to pray for my brother, Jack Stevens, who's transitioning into a memory care center. He's really confused and scared. And, oh, uh, that'll be on Tuesday. For sure. I'd like us to remember Betty Dean as she's been being evaluated and uh, figuring out how, what her living situation is gonna be as she deals with dementia and possibly Alzheimer's. Any others? Okay. Um, Pastor, if you can uh, lead us in prayer. As we gather together to get today, we like to have a joint worship prayer where we say each other's concerns and as a response, you will respond. Let me start over. <laughs> Sometimes it's just better to start over. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, preaching to the choir over here. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Brian, that's for you. As we, as we engage in prayer, it's important that we connect the voices to the faces of our siblings in Christ here in this room and here in this community. Not only to, to know that someone else is caring for you, but knowing that someone else is praying for you and the things that concern you. Whether you're online or here in person, you know that there are people that care. So as I say, we lift them up, the response is, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, it is said, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Here we are gathered in your name. May you be in our midst as we lift up our prayers. Hear our prayers. Dear heavenly and gracious God, we lift up patience. A thing that only time can take care of is something that we need to be able to sit in. And might you, might you be able to guide and comfort Brian's parents and one another with a practice of patience so that we may be able to invite you into each of our instances. We lift them up. We lift up Joan March's brother, Jack, as he's about to transition into a care facility. Might you lift up the staff and, and, and warm their hearts so that they might give the same love and, and care as though he was a personal, dear, loved family member. And might you comfort the family of Joan that they know that he is in good hands and that they might be able to communicate and still converse with their brother. We lift them up. We lift up Betty Dean. Although she has not been able to make it to church, we have always felt her presence here whether it's in the hearts of her friends or, or if her wishing to be here. We feel you here with us, Betty, and we are always around you. If you ever need us, we are here, and, and Christ is there for you too. We will all be there together as we lift you up. Hear our prayers. As we continue to pray all these prayers, we also 
pray for those seeking and currently undergoing medical treatments. We lift them up. We continue to pray for the families and communities that are affected by storms and natural events across the country and the world. Please help to heal them. We lift them up. We continue to pray for the victims and families again this week affected by gun violence that continues to affect our communities and the world that we live in. We lift them up. We continue to pray for the women across the world as we pray for their safety, their strength, and for their basic human rights to exist together with all of humanity. We lift them up. We continue to pray for the war-torn countries of not just Ukraine now, but also of Sudan. Might you, might you fill those families there that are going through the turmoil of what war is and, and bring them some peace. And hopefully that will bring in an everlasting peace to the whole region, to the whole world. We lift them up. As we pray for all these concerns and joys that we have in our communities, we also ask that you lift up the countries observed by the World Council of Churches this week. Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Mongolia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, we lift them up. Dear Heavenly and Gracious God, we are present in worship today to lift up these concerns that your children and that the world may be healed. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Abba, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please enjoy the anthem, Shepherd Me, O God. And I believe there's, uh, there's going to be a refrain that I'll let you say.
Wow, that was beautiful. <laughs> what a blessing. All right. The scripture reading. The first scripture reading comes from Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. The Lord leads me beside still waters. The Lord restores my soul. The Lord leads me in right paths for the Lord name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for, before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The second scripture reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 through 25, the example of Christ's suffering. For it is commend a commendable thing if, being aware of God, a person endures pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, <clears throat> what credit is that? But if you endure when you do good and suffer for it, this is a commendable thing before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that having died to sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you are able and join in the preparation hymn, preparatory hymn, Close to Thee, in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 407.
Dear heavenly and gracious God, may the meditations of my heart and the words from my mouth be glorious to you, ever lifting up the people that are able to understand and digest the meaning of love and the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Why is it a good morning? You're back. We're back. We're here. We got the AC on and it's hot outside. Amen. Amen. It is a good and glorious morning because we are here indeed. We made it back. We each made it back each Sunday whenever we're able to make it to give praise to God. It is indeed a wonderful morning. So good morning indeed. But I want to ask you a question. Have you ever heard the phrase, hurt people, hurt people? I said the phrase is, hurt people, hurt people. I wonder how many of us have experienced trauma in our lives. And I ask this question because it's something that we go through in in the world that we have to sometimes have that patience to know that when everything gets crazy and tumultuous and, and, and too much to handle, that the person on the other end might be coming from a place of hurt. And then it is much easier to empathize. Every year we go through this experience in the church. Starting with Palm Sunday, we enter in, uh, we see Jesus entering into Jerusalem and we celebrate him coming into the fullness of his ministry where Jesus is in our hearts as part of the humanity and part almighty. During Holy Week, we start to cleanse ourselves and make ourselves ready for what is come, what is to come that we might not fully understand, but we are willing to witness and embrace the sacrifice that we know Jesus is about to make on that cross. While Easter Sunday is a joyous moment in our faith, we sometimes lose track of this true significance in our personal lives. Say someday in October, do you ever think that Christ has risen thus defeating death and demonstrating what love is capable of overcoming. Yes, Christ has risen indeed. We should carry that in our hearts throughout the year. We try to do this because even in the second Sunday after Easter, we reached out our hands as we observed the story of doubting Thomas. We wanted more. Thomas wanted more. He didn't want to just hear that Christ has risen. He says, I want to touch the wounds that were left in your side. We, as people, continuously on our faith journey, we want to know more. We want to believe more. We want to know that you are real and that so, and because you are real, God, that, that the salvation and love that you taught are real for all of us. In the third Sunday after Easter, we, we understood on the walk to Emmaus that Jesus Christ is indeed among us as we two or three are gathered in his name. We find ways to experience Jesus in our lives. We find that when we talk and live how Jesus taught us, that Jesus is right beside us all along the way. The fourth Sunday today, we will begin to endure, carrying with us the lessons of this Easter Sunday, of this Easter season. The past several weeks have have all been using a moment of silence, a moment of reflection, of words and scripture. And I ask you now, what have you found on your inward journey? What different meditations I heard uh, Margie was talking about PTA, prayer, 
Praise, thanks, ask. Praise, thanks, ask. What are some other meditative practices that some of you have been doing throughout the, the month? Sleeping. If you are able to rest your mind and your spirit, that is a way to get rest indeed. What other ways do you find rest? Hiking, going out for a drive, cooking. Sometimes focusing on one word and going out from there and coming back to it. These are all different ways that we can meditate and embracing meditation and reflection and peace in our lives offers us ways to endure. Jesus tells us that we will encounter persecution and suffering. In Matthew chapter uh, 5, verses 11 and 12, Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil things against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Does that mean that it's not gonna, we're not going to suffer a little bit when we're being persecuted? No. Of course, we'll hurt a little bit. But if we can stand on our faith and on the love that was given to us on the cross, we might not lash back out. We might not create more chaos, but we will actually be a place of peace for someone else. If we are able to do that, we are slowly starting to spread the word that Jesus was teaching us so many years ago, so long ago. Jesus is still here with us today, offering us countless opportunities to preach his word. I am thankful to have advocates for different ages around me. On the conferences that I went to this last week, I found myself around different ages, different faiths, different uh, identities, different nationalities and ethnicities around me. And not just this last week, throughout my life, I've always had this diverse community around me in odd places that normally don't have diverse communities. And I am thankful for this because it offers new perspectives, new understandings, and new ways of being present with God. Sometimes I might not know how to deal with the situation, but when I take the time to listen to someone else from a different walk of life, maybe they will have something that I can apply in my own situation. And that's some of that same peace. When we have a diverse uh, community around us, we will find that the solutions exist right next to us when we're willing to listen. And then I'm also reminded of something that I'm guilty of saying too. How many of us had said something along the lines of, well, when I was younger, dot, dot, <laughs> dot, walk uphill both ways in the snow, carrying a bookcase, and a job, <laughs> and a dog, <laughs> and chores. How many of us are guilty of saying something like this? The idea that, that the things that we went through, the things that were maybe traumatic to us, need to happen to the next generation so that they can have the same sort of character that we have, that we feel that we have good character and we somehow made it through. What I'm saying is the next generation doesn't have to go through the same traumas. New people to, to new situations and, and new people to different organizations don't have to undergo the same ridicule that follows us around in our own personal lives. And they fall short when approached with scripture. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 23, when he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. Hazing does not build character. 
Hazing tries to break it. Wounds are not badges of honor. They're scars and proof of suffering in humanity. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that having died to sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. The sins have been paid for that we have, that we have accumulated. Because of Christ, there is no evidence of our sinful nature. We are washed and our wounds are clean and gone. But on Christ's body, he took on those sins. Today, we must endure. We will not be perfect by any means, but we must strive to avoid the abuse-stricken world for the sake of passing it on, for the sake of thinking that suffering builds character. No, love that got you through the suffering is what built that character. You are who you are because you have found love within yourself and that God loves you too. That is what grows you, not the suffering, not the pain. It is love that defines you as Christians. So today I want you to think of what Christ has done for you. Would you not do the same for the next generation? For the next newcomer? For the next new person in your life that you come across? Let's read Psalms 23 together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord in green pastures, the Lord leads me to still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I want us to take a moment to reflect on Psalms 23 and how it can make each of us endure. as we find ourselves in that green pasture, finding rest and enduring whatever the world might bring at us, might you also have peace. Amen? Amen. All right. Guess what? Homework. What meditation practice or centering moment can you practice in your life? I ask that you try to do this for one day a week at least and see how that week goes. For two minutes, set aside time just for you and God to have a moment of just rest. No phone, no coffee, well, maybe coffee, no, <laughs> or a hot drink, or tea. or tea. 
but just to sit and be or lie or walk, but, but usher in that time with God and you will get it sevenfold back. Come back next week to see what suffering good looks like. And now I'd also like to thank you for all your generous giving. We appreciate all that has been offered, whether it's monetary, time, or donations of food and clothing. They all help keep the ministries of the church active and alive in this community. Please enjoy the offertory as Usher brings around the joy basket. Please join me in the offering prayer. Holy One, we give you thanks and praise for your promise of new life. We thank you for these gifts as we offer them into your hands. May they bring hope and new life to those in need. In the name of the resurrected Christ, we pray. Amen. Please enjoy and join us in the closing hymn.
as we listen to the postlude, let us be reminded that where we are, that we are going from the world of the one to the world of the many, to let the light of Christ guide ourselves and the many. Members of the body of Christ, may the unconditional love of God, the deep peace of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. refreshments and fellowship hall don't forget to sign the birthday cards if you have an opportunity and the anniversary cards there's two of them <laughs> 